Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This time featuring this beautiful XT computer. This is gonna be a quick video, probably part one of two, featuring this gorgeous DTK Data 1000 personal computer. Matched up here with an IBM 5151 monitor and an XT keyboard. In this part, we're gonna be going over the hardware of this computer, and part two will focus more on the practicalities involved of owning an XT computer. So let's turn her on and see what she does. And just look and hear her coming to life. That hard drive spinning up. That beautiful green phosphor monitor display lighting up. The floppy drive initializing and that typical MFM hard drive sound that's coming out of the machine. This is really lovely. And the machine boots. So this is how I got it. I didn't do anything with it yet. It boots straight into MS-DOS from the hard drive. And this is one of those XTs with a turbo button allowing it to switch speeds from 4.7 MHz to 10 MHz. And it even has a reset button. Because this is the DTK Data 1000 XT computer. It has a key lock, a power LED, hard drive LED, turbo button, and reset button. Something that you don't see all that often in XT computers. We also have a hard drive and a floppy drive. On the side, nothing special here except for this really nice power button on the back we have the power supply with the power input output we have a fan we've got some room here for some ports we have a uh, game port connector serial port parallel port an mda connector and another parallel port and yeah this power button is really amazing really love that on these types of computers so let's open her up and see what we have inside. A pretty traditional layout for an XT style computer. I can already recognize that Seagate hard drive, the ST225 20 megabyte hard drive, DTK switching power supply, some cables, motherboard, some expansion cards. So yeah, we're gonna be taking a closer look at this one. We're going to be starting by removing the expansion cards. First up, we have this video card here, probably an MDA card, Hercules compatible maybe, with an MDA connector and a parallel connector. Second card that we have appears to be the hard drive controller card, Western Digital one, with the MFM controller connectors, Western Digital chip. Pretty standard stuff for an XT computer. And finally, we have this card, which not only acts as the floppy controller, but it also has a coin cell battery. So it's able to keep track of time. This is one of those IO plus cards from DTK, giving you some extra ports, the uh, coin cell battery, and even a game port, which wasn't hooked up. So this previous owner probably wasn't much of a gamer. We have the standard AT style power connector. So this is in one piece. Normally they are uh, two separate pieces. We have some jumper wires here going into the motherboard, probably to switch the speed. We have a PC speaker connector, and this seems to be the reset connector. So this computer has never been deassembled. So we're gonna do that now because in order to get the motherboard out, we need to remove a couple of screws. So let's go ahead and do that. And as always, you're always missing that one screw that you didn't notice here at the center. So let's go ahead and remove that because otherwise it would be pretty difficult to get this motherboard out of the case. But with the final screw removed, here it is, the DTK branded motherboard. The case is in excellent condition. There's almost no dust here whatsoever. So all that's left here are a couple of these you know, jumper wires that come from the front panel. 
including the PC speaker connector. And here we have the assembly with the key lock, the power LED, hard drive LED, turbo button and reset button. All of that is wired into the motherboard. On the side here, we have the Seagate 20 megabyte MFM hard drive and the 360K floppy. So let's go ahead and remove those. So we see a number of different screws here. So possibly this computer uh, came with a hard drive upgrade at some point. On the other side of the hard drive and the floppy drive, we are limited in the amount of space that we have to unscrew them. So I'm gonna use this smaller screwdriver here to get both the floppy drive and the hard drive removed. We also need to remove the data and control cable of the MFM uh, hard drive that goes into the controller card and also the power cable. So yeah, the ST225 hard drive from Seagate, 20 megabytes MFM encoding, something you see a lot in these XT clones, but also in IBM computers, an iconic uh, hard drive and it still works. So yeah, that's really, really something. Now I wasn't able to get the 360K five and a quarter inch floppy out of the case, despite having removed all of the screws or so I thought, because if you look at the bottom of the case, also something they kind of, you know, stole from the IBM PC lineup is that you have this hole here in the bottom where you can attach screws. And the floppy drive is in fact also held in place here from the bottom. So after removing those, we can slide the floppy drive right on out. And man, just look at the condition of this case. I mean, there's actually virtually no dust here. It is super, super clean. So, so yeah, also judging by the state of the motherboard, I mean, this PC has been really well preserved. And if we look at the motherboard, it is DTK branded. We have a copyright and a model number here. This is a 10 megahertz turbo board. So. You know, back in the day when you had these XT clones, a lot of them only ran at 4.7 megahertz, but some of them had this turbo functionality, allowing you to basically double the speed of the original IBM PC or IBM PC XT. And if we go over the rest of the motherboard here, we have the CPU, which is an AMD 8088. So yeah, Intel x86 compatible. This one can run from anywhere between 4.77 megahertz all the way up to 10 megahertz as this board does with the turbo enabled. We also have a socket here for an optional uh, floating point unit, which is not installed. Standard AT style power connector. So from the power supply, there is a single connector instead of two separate connectors, meaning that you will have a hard time fitting this in the wrong way. Standard DIN connector for the keyboard will only accept XT style keyboards. We have a number of dip switches that mimic the original IBM PC uh, XT behavior. So we can set stuff like uh, FPU installed, uh, number of floppy drives, hard drive installed, uh, video display settings. We have 8-bit ISA slots for uh, expansion. We have uh, seven of them in total. Here we have the BIOS chip, which is obviously also DTK branded, dated from 1986. And we have 640 kilobytes of memory divided over these two banks here. There are a number of connectors here on the motherboard to hook up things like the PC speaker, the turbo button, reset button, LEDs. So that's also a nice touch, something that you don't see on all XT compatibles. 
The hard drive controller card is a WDXT Gen from Western Digital from 1987. A pretty standard MFM controller card provided by Western Digital. It doesn't have any jumpers, so you cannot configure anything on the board, but it does have a BIOS that allows you to configure a small number of different hard drives in order to work with this controller. And it also has a built-in low-level format routine, so you can basically just start a program to low-level format whatever hard drive is attached to this controller. Again, a pretty standard card, something that you see a lot in XT uh, clones. Next up, we have the video card, the MCGPB. This is the ROM chip here. I'm not that familiar with the video chip, this MCG2501. But this is a Hercules compatible, you know, MDA card with a printer port and the standard 9 pin the sub connector for hooking up a monitor again not really familiar with this video chip but and next up we have this hexa io plus card which has a number of features it not only acts as a floppy controller but it also has you know an additional parallel port it has a serial port and it doesn't end there because this is a lot more than just a standard, you know, floppy connector card, which you use this connector for. It also has a serial port, a game port connector here. It has a coin cell with the clock chip sitting next to it. So this PC is able to keep track of time. A nice feature for an XT style computer. And you can configure various aspects of the card using these jumpers. The 360 kilobyte five and a quarter inch floppy drive here in black with a red LED from the Chinon or Chinon FZ502, 360 kilobyte capacity. And of course, we also have the Seagate ST225 MFM hard drive. 20 megabytes i mean this is kind of an iconic hard drive you see these on a regular basis not only in these xt clones but also in ibm pcs it even has the error map here written on the top with the cylinders and the heads that are problematic i just love the design and the pcb the casing the front panel yeah, really, really nice piece of hardware. And luckily it still works. And, um, you know, still amazed by the fact that these old hard drives just continue to work. Obviously you can also opt for an XT IDE solution like this, giving you somewhat more flexibility in terms of storage. And most importantly, also getting software in and out of the system. So yeah, this is a nice alternative if you have an XT with a hard drive which is broken or you don't want to bother with the hard drive. But that's going to be for part two of this video where we'll be looking at this XT IDE solution. Explore some keyboard options for the XT look at some different monitor configurations and even seeing how we can hook up a VGA monitor to our XT computer. We're going to be exploring some software that you can run on the XT as well as playing some games. So please stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed part one of this little video series involving the DTK Data 1000 IBM PC XT compatible. And I hope to see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.